morning and welcome back to Tartle Cast. Thank you everybody for being avid listeners. I know we have a lot of episodes we put out here, so if you are paying attention, uh, good for you. Yeah, Alex, I'm triggered. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of anxiety right now. I know you got a lot of anxiety. Do you know what... Uh, you, know you know what makes me anxious? What? Is that there's 7.8 billion people in this world. Uh-huh. And in 30 years, we're going to have 9.8 billion. Okay, that's... That's a, 2 billion more people. A lot of mouths to feed, and we're already doing a poor job of feeding people that are starving. We got so many fronts that we're struggling on. Think about how, yeah, it's just... What are we going to do, Alex? Can't even feed people. Let's figure this out right now. Yeah, so the question is, are you going <laughs> to use are you going to use artificial intelligence, Jason, to exacerbate consumption, or are you going to use it to help solve the consumption problem? Ooh. Mm, there we go. Very interesting. So what's the name of this report here? Uh, it's by uh, theedgemarkets.com. It's mm-hmm. my say digitainability combining digitalization and mm-hmm. I just had a mini stroke right there. Yeah. Digitalization <laughs> and sustainability. <laughs> yeah, sustainability. Uh, so why do human beings eat food? So we can sustain ourselves, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Donuts. You know, the earth has certain things that's required of it so that it can self-sustain. But we are yanking the resources away from the earth so it can't feed itself. I hope that makes sense. And then if you get 2 billion more people yanking things away with rapid urbanization, all this other stuff, mm-hmm. more consumer consumption, that's a problem. Yeah, for thousands of years, we just take, 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 take. Yeah, take, 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 take. When are and, we going to give back to... Yeah, when are you going to give back? When are you going to strike a balance? Yeah, that's all we need. Yeah. Stri- it's just can, all negative polarity all the time. All, when can we put the positive in there? Yeah, we got to put some positive in there. We, you know, our battery and our magnet's totally out of whack right now. So let's uh, let's go through this. And let's talk about some sweet points in here. I thought this article was uh, quite fantastic. So yeah, it is. Yeah, team me up. Um, so we look at uh, the current level of consumption in developed economies is made possible through the intensive use of domestic resources, plus the ongoing flow of resources from developing economies, which yeah. you had talked about. Logistics and supply chain. It's like uh, feeding. It's just feeding the system. So let's say, let's assume that this level of consumption that we have in Europe, Canada. United States, that we make it equal for everyone in the world. We'd be screwed. Think about this. No, this would be even worse. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so, and, and, so we say everybody in India, China, Brazil, uh, all these places, Russia, all these, so now we're consuming just as much as everybody is in the United States. Uh, Now, (laughs) on top of that, Alex, Yeah. we're going to add 2 billion more people. Can't do it. Can't do it. So their transition to a state of world is by 2050. Why is that too late? Why, why is that too late? Because once you've already gotten up to that point, you put it into this sort of, they call them catalytic spurs. Mm-hmm. And it just boop, 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 And then it just keeps getting worse. You get the worst snowball effect you could ever ask for. You can't wait until 2050. Okay? And if you're going to have a boom of people, you need to figure out how to unboom consumption. Mm-hmm. All right? It's as simple as that. Well, I, and maybe, maybe, and see, this is where, this is where like Ready Player One plays such a beautiful role. I didn't know that was after a book. Yeah, yeah. I only recently realized it was a book written first and then. And, it, but it that's where it plays a beautiful role because if you can keep people in their small apartments and keep them hooked on virtual reality, <laughs> then they're creating less of a footprint. Yeah, or it's the simple one. If they're having more fun in the other world. Yeah, if you're in the U.S., don't eat enough food that would feed four people, eat enough that just feeds one. Could you imagine how... People do it every meal. Whoever comes up with this virtual world is going to be like the next Google, Facebook all combined. Yeah. And then all the advertising and all the ways to try to visually stimulate us to keep us on the system. Like not... How many, Netflix will be gone, all that. We'll just be in this. So you're saying there's like a world where people don't even like do tourism? No, the tourism like, would be done through... Like if I can, if I can pay 10 bucks tonight, nine ninety five, yeah, and I visually, physically mentally feel like i'm in bali Mm, interesting and i'm going to an edm concert on you know with coconuts all around me and at a beach what about all the sickos that do all that sub-saharan hunting of those endangered species oh yeah why don't you just get your sick fix on virtual reality yeah they'll have that i mean i'd imagine and that way you don't there's got to be limits to it obviously i don't want to take down the white rhino leave it alone i mean i i get the adult side of things Mm -hmm. you know all of that but um yeah i would if you actually feel like you're hunting somewhere and you're not hurting the animal or just take do the, that, take the aspect of like candy crush mm-hmm. and like buying digital things. Mm-hmm. Just do that instead of actually going out and buying more stuff you don't need. Yeah. The, I Own mean, it digitally 
and then never actually have to go pick it up because it doesn't have any value anyway. Yeah, because you're going to, I mean, oh, I don't even want to get into that. So let's just get back to the article because now I'm starting to Do think. Do you want to imagine being in a house with more square footage? Go ahead. So but then I'm going to make you clean it. And then yeah. you're going to be like, I wish my house wasn't so big. Yeah, I had that situation. Yeah. <laughs> when I, Transforming systems globally at the scale and speed require exponential progress to realize sustainable development calls for unprecedented level of action and coordination across all industries and sectors of society. That, so let's stay here. How do we put pressure on government and corporate um, identities to you, be... I know. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you have to show them that climate instability is going to, one, cripple their profits because that's all they care about at this moment. You got to show them that. And then for governments, you have to show them that climate instability is going to create civil unrest in their country. Governments don't want instability. Mm -mm. Okay. And corporations do not want a knock at their, you know, the profit margins. Right. So if you can highlight both of those things and you got to say, listen, we got to come together. If you want to sustain this good life that you've had, then you really, all of us have to come together right this moment, especially with the growth in our populations. Well, you know, I, you know I'm a, a history buff. And when I look at um, Nazi Germany with what happened there. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, you had mass inflation, unemployment, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, and so then the Nazi party came in and decided to say, hey, let's build, make it wartime. Yeah, so, no. and I'm leading into the article talks about this, yeah. but, um, so now we have no, um, we had the, it was called TODT that they put together, you know, I mean, there was a lot of slave labor with that, but, um, they had that. So everybody, all the youth and everybody were able to work, you know, built the Audubon and all this great bridges and yeah, stuff but like that. Yeah, what was it for? Yeah, exactly. Wartime. <laughs> and then yeah. you had all the factories booming, making mm -hmm. planes and stuff like that. So they put everybody to work. Inflation, of course, went down. And so this is what he's saying, John Elkington a prominent sustainability expert, he said this, and this is a great quote, achieving expositional progress requires a scale of collective effort rarely seen outside of wartime conditions. Yeah, and so listen, uh, the Nazi regime did it well for negative purposes. We, we did too. Yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah, Great yeah, Britain yeah, did yeah. too. Yes, yeah. it's fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, fair enough, bro. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but... What we need to do is that sort of coalition of effort needs to happen towards something that is for the longevity of all of the human race. That's what's important. So can we declare war on climate instability? Without it having to be... Uh, an actual a, war? An and actual can we war, take wanting our to hurt efforts, somebody. the military industrial complex, and make it the environmental industrial complex? Yeah, I and like we, that. There's lots of money to be made off of this. That slaps. Yeah. Environmental industrial complex. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And then and then we all get together, have a coalition of this, and then countries, you know, and, and we can I don't think we should stop saying coalition because that's the basis of fascism. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah you're okay. Right. Yeah. Thanks to the Romans, blah, 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 blah. That's my history buff kind mm -hmm. of thing. Word etymology. Um and then so all right, so what does that lead to? No, now? I I think every country should get one vote. My lat itches? Oh, that's better. Okay. Yeah, every country should get one vote. What do you mean? What do you mean one vote? That already worries everybody. Uno Everybody's vote. like, no, no, no. United States, we're bigger. We have more of an economic. We should have twenty-seven votes. Why? But what, what if every country got one vote? Yeah, what makes you any special? So the United States gets one vote. So out of these two hundred some countries we have, they each come together for environmental causes mm -hmm. where they're going to put their resources together and then they vote. Like they're actually going to put their resources towards it. Well, see, this is a problem because it's like now it's like who benefits who and who benefits me. And that's now I gotta, right. Now I got to cut deals because, that's you know, right. I don't want to help somebody else. That's what the countries are saying. So powering good amid tough times mm -hmm. in the article, it talks about this. So it talks about the COVID-19 pandemic severely disrupted lives, economies across the globe. It spurred governments to seek out new technological tools, urban solutions that can address the current crisis. Now it, it's a driver of our next stage of economic growth. We've talked about the fourth industrial revolution. Correct. As one's knowledge of sustainability grows, no one you speak to this, the realization of how much there is still to know may be overwhelming. Yeah, correct. So it's, you know, uh, I call it going down the rabbit hole. You, you know, we're in Zoolander. He said, once you pull the thread of the sweater, the whole thing, uh, you know, unravels. Mm. It's great stuff. But the point is, the second you begin to focus on something, you're like, wow, I didn't really realize everything that was involved with this, mm. everything connected with this. So if you can find some way to gently push people down that path of uh, knowledge and awareness around something, help them educate themselves, and then mm. also see the impact of their efforts, then you're doing something really special. Now we're getting somewhere. But... 
you know, they need to take those steps down the rabbit hole. Yeah. And, and I like to use instead of rabbit hole for myself analogy, and, and you can correlate with this is fog. No one likes to be in a fog no. mentally. And, you know, we're driving. Well, you know, it's changed war. I mean, like George Washington was able to move his troops through because it was a morning fog, you mm-hmm. know, and they couldn't see the ships. You know, there's like this Roman myth about fogs would come in on the battle while they're in valleys and they would turn on each other through the gods. You know, that's I mean, crazy. so fog. And I feel like that's where we're at now. I feel like there's a lot of people that have, especially in developed countries, there's a lot of people that have good intentions. Mm-hmm. You know, we're buying more organic. We're buying but more they're, sustainable. they're fogged out. Though. Yes. Yeah. You it's know? like, what, what, okay, I can consume good products. Other than that, what else am I supposed to do? Yeah. So what do I do? You know, because because check you, it out. That, you ready for this? Yes. What do people do on the weekends here? They, they go buy stuff. Yeah, and have parties and barbecue and it's buy buy. Okay, I bought that. Now I want to go buy more. That's all they're doing. It's buying more constantly. But, but here's my question: Why do we regulate whenever we think of environmental policies? Yeah. We think the government's taking care of this for us. No, it's not. People need to take care of it for themselves. It is their planet. Mm -hmm. It's not the government's planet. Can we be clear about that? Everything you consume is a direct driver of these things that go and indirectly affect these governments. That's what it is. Yeah, and, and he said the more that he got into this with like a, the art, this article is greatly written. Um, greatly written. Well written. Well written. With this, I was trying to use the word great in some format because... I think I, I love this style of writing, but he talks about taking a helicopter view and looking at these issues. And then he made an amazing reference. It's so simple and I love it. He said, I began to realize that no matter where you pull the blanket towards, some part of the body is unlikely to be uncovered. Yeah. Because we all hate that at night. That's nighttime. like me when I'm sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Your feet's cold. And then, you know, you, ha- I actually by six, myself, but I'm you have fiance five, pulls yeah. the blankets from you. Or- I call it the alligator death roll. <laughs> you know, when you just grab a cheese and you just like spin, spin, spin. So, and that, but so, you know, I put the, I, I put the blanket over here. Oh, this is uncovered. Yeah. I put the blanket here and I think that's what creates the fog. Yeah, it does create the fog, but it's also, it, it's like, where's my equilibrium? I can't mm. equalize this environment. Yes. So in other words, it says sustainability issues are heavily intertwined. They cannot be tackled in isolation one from another. We've been saying this with the big seven. All these things are absolutely interconnected. And to talk about that interconnection, we will be back for part two.